It is a rivalry week, uh, which means in Tallahassee, it's Florida Gators hate week, or maybe for many Seminoles, it's Florida Gators hate year, hate decade, century, and eternity. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking Florida State each and every week. We got uh, big game James Coleman on the line from fifth quarter college football. Jason Parker from Chop Chat and uh, Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day. How you boys doing tonight? Amazing. Amazing. Just happy to be here, guy. I Good to see to, you, James. I just want to say that it was an amazing week of football. <laughs> it started out on and let's let's give a shout out to the FIU uh, FIU Golden Panthers for allowing us to make fun of the Canes for a little bit. That was a fun game to be at. That was a fun way to spend my bye week. And uh, then let's give a shout out to the the Steelers for pulling it out against the the winless Bengals, the the Jaguars. Well, they didn't quite pull it out, but let's give a shout out to the Ravens yesterday. How how'd that how that go, Logan? Did you watch that game? Yeah, I watched a little bit of it, but um, yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty worried about that cat being there. But you know you know what the yeah. Bucks the Bucks tore up the Rams defense too. So, okay. the too so James, what's going on here is I am allowing the needless shout outs. I, I think we'll be shouting to like the. Uh, I don't know, the New York Rangers or something uh, within oh, a, the Rangers, the Rangers. if we continue at this rate. We'll continue the uh, Florida State talk, actually. We, we come here, James, to talk Florida State football, if you believe bad. it. The Rangers are bad this year. Sorry, I'm a right. Rangers fan. We're bad this year. Good job. So let's uh, talk about uh, Florida. What makes Florida special? Why well, I, I know Florida's not special. None of you are going to answer that question. But the Gators game, the, the rivalry game, special and and we'll we'll go to our our latest here with uh with james because he watched it played it now watches again and analyzes it yeah i mean dopey dan is really good uh he's done a really good job um um building that and um putting things in the way that the way he wants it to be done and he's made florida back into kind of respectable and uh, and <laughs> And right now we're we're playing catch up in his world when we were way ahead, um, which is just a, which is unfortunate. But um, I like this this Florida this this Florida team is, is extremely talented, and they're way better than us in our weaknesses. That's the scary part going into this game. In the trenches, they're better than us. Um, they are better at wide wide receiver than our DB across the board. It's, I wish they only had two wide receivers that were really good. Um, the problem is they've got, you know, four or five guys that all have the um, similar stats. So you don't really know who's going to do what, but they're really they're, – again, again, all I can do is respect what they've done and, and pray our guys show up and get off the bus. I'm going to take the other angle of this one. You want to come to me real quick? I'm going to hate on Florida real quick and their their redneck fan base and their 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 white trash trailer park fans. I hate Florida. <laughs> I despise Florida, and I love Logan and I. We disagree on this one. I'm I I, I guess I don't I dislike Miami. I hate Florida. Um, the the hate has been there since the '90s. I mean, that was when this was the rivalry in college football. They they met 12 times in the '90s. Every time the teams were ranked in the top 10, you know, the winners play for national titles. I think it was five times over an eight-year span. Even the loser won a national title uh, in 96. And for, the, for those who grew up in this state during that time, it defined what college football was. Um, from a Florida State fan perspective, and I'll say this as a Florida State fan who, who used to be a, a dire Dolphins fan back in the day, back when the Dolphins were a decent team, the, the Gators are a lot like the Jets. In the sense that that they they won a, they've won a couple titles they've had a few good seasons but for the most part they, they just talk a lot they talk a lot of smack now are they are they good this year they're nine and two they, they're very respectable their two losses are to teams who could end up both being in the playoffs they're definitely both going to be in the SEC championship game but they could both somehow sneak into the playoffs um, but I'm sorry I I legitimately think and I I say this with all sincerity I do believe that Florida State has the potential to go into Gainesville and win this game. I think Florida State's playing a lot more confident over the last two weeks. They've, they've built that confidence. You know, There's not that pressure of, is this team going to go to a bowl game? Are they going to be bowl eligible? They've already gotten there. I would not be surprised if Florida State 
does go into Gainesville and and sweeps Gainesville this decade. What do you Florida. think, Logan? Well, Florida, watching now college football playoffs, Florida State's going to be facing number 11 down in Gainesville. Uh, I think this is going to have to do a lot with Odell Higgins, and, you know, we've heard some good things about him uh, and the coaching. But I want to ask I want to ask Jason real quick, too, real, uh, real fast. What, what, hate, what makes you hate Florida the most over Miami? Because it's all – and we've talked about this before. I think we talked about this actually before the season started, before Florida played Miami – because those two schools whine and complain about uh, you know uh, who who ended up breaking their rivalry instead of just manning up and playing each other. I think it goes back to where you grow up. You grew up in the Tallahassee area, so you grew up around a lot more uh, people who either went to Florida or were at least Florida fans up in the the Panhandle area. I, however, uh, am from the the South Florida area, so I grew up and I was around a lot more people who were who are Miami fans or or went to the University of Miami. So that's why there's a dislike for Miami, but there's an outright hate for Florida. My best friend's from Tampa area. I moved there when I was in high school. I moved to Tampa and and he dislikes Miami more than Florida. So it's 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 a lot, I think, where you come from. So being in the South Florida area, it's definitely a a hate for Florida. Plus Florida fans Miami fans can kind of shrug off their 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 smack talk. I mean, they were smack talking FIU after FIU beat them this past week, and we talked about this before, and that was hilarious. Florida fans just smack talk about how great they are. How oh, we 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 especially Florida grads are the worst. Oh, well, we went to school in the Harvard of the South. No, you didn't. You went to a public university in the state of Florida. You're you're no different from us at Florida State. It's a good school. It's a very good school. You went to a public university in Florida. Congratulations. Your degree means the same as my degree from FSU. Anytime a fan base, and I'm going to hit James up on this in just a second, but anytime that there's a fan base that's that's ridiculed by another fan base in regards to these are just the worst fans in the world, I often think, isn't that pretty much just go across the board to any fan base? There are lunatic fans, reasonable fans, yeah. decent fans, nice fans. It, it, I, I just think I, I know that there's some disparity uh, to a certain extent with certain fans, but uh, I, I would think that that would be the case across the board with with any fan base. We, we have Jabroni fans in Garden and Gold who are who who are an embarrassment. Who've written stuff probably on no game days boards, on shop chat mm -hmm. boards, and 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 written horrible things and said horrible things and are just idiots. Oh, it's it's completely. We are not immune to it at Florida State. But it's also hate Florida week, so this is the week where we pick on it, orange or blue. Mm -hmm. That's fun. I have a friend, like I said, I'm going with, and he uh, was around in 2013 when I was making a lot of fun of them, calling them the foreign eighters after the season. Uh, yeah. Had a laugh with them. We had a great time, at least on my end of things. Um, but then uh, now it's a little bit different, and it will probably be a little bit different on Saturday. We'll see what the score prediction will be from us. I'm interested to see Jason's at the end. I, I feel like this is a grand season finale, uh, regular season. Now I think he might he might pull out all stops here. This might be. Oh, I've, I've got something for you, but I'm going to ask James a question real quick. I do have a question. I, I was first in line for the James question. I wanted to distinguish right, well, I the. I was distinguishing all which right. I'm always first in line, but I actually was first in all line right. this time. Uh, let, let's distinguish the Miami rivalry and the Florida rivalry. I want James's take on that. Oh, I hate Florida. Um, <laughs> with, 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 with passion. Um, losing to Florida means a lot more to me than losing to um, Miami. Uh, like Miami, I almost went to Miami. Um, I like those guys. I talked to a lot of Miami players regularly. I've just started talking to some Florida guys, but um, really, I'm not gonna lie. I, I would would love to beat Florida. Like um, actually, like somebody on the, on your text line says, 100 to zero. Um, that would be my pleasure um, to to beat them and to not, not have a running clock, like no mercy, just over and over and over again uh, and running the ball, like fullback dive 48. To, almost like how the Ravens beat down the Rams. That's my vision of how to beat University of Florida. But hey. unfortunately, um, yeah. Hey, the, Ra the Ravens beat the Rams, right, James? I just want to let Logan know real quick, right? Yeah, I, just, I, I didn't mean to bring that game into play. Oh, they, ran, they ran 40 times. Bring it up. He still hasn't responded to my text from yesterday. But I do have a question. <laughs> you were part of 
FSU teams that both got a win over Florida in Tallahassee and got that win in Gainesville in 2003. How – talk about that game. Talk about – and it was a game, you know, I was in school up there. I remember a, a smack talking my way out of the swamp on that one. Talk about how big it is from a Florida State player perspective to win in Gainesville in front of their home fans. How big is that? Well, I mean, at that time, it wasn't – like we were we, – I think we beat them five times in a row or something like that. And it was like we were joking about, um, you know, is it really a rivalry, rivalry if the other team doesn't win? Mm-hmm. But uh, when we came down, it was a great game. Um, they they um they gave us a lot, um, a lot of energy. We're going back a lot, of going back and forth. Uh, I think they had a they got a lead, and um, they were like doing the throat slash and mm-hmm. a lot of other stuff. And um, I was on the field when we when we uh, made that play. The first play was the fourth and 12, I believe, to Dominic Robinson um, that he converted. Great catch, um, great throw by Ricks. Um, then the next play was P.K. Spam, um in the back of the end zone, which was, I'm not going to lie to you, it was a stupid throw, but it worked. Um, and, and it was because um, it was first down. I only say it was stupid because it was unnecessary. It was first down. There was no need to take um, take that, that play. Uh, I think it was um, – past 60 takeoff um, both me and Leon Washington did um, uh, swing routes. Um, both of us were open. If they had thrown it to me, it would have been like a 10 yard gain. So it was, I'm glad they didn't throw it to me, even though I was open, Chris. Um, so it was Leon, but he threw it to the PK. It was a great, um, great catch. The dog tried to bite him. And it was just one of those games that growing up watching the rivalry on TV, you just know, what it's supposed to end like. And um, there's a picture I put on Twitter and I'm on IG and Facebook of me and Chris talking like with the one second left. And I'm like, man, the only thing missing right now is a fight. That would be the only thing that would make this one of the best games is a fight. And then a fight broke out um, right in the middle when we, what we did during my time, my crew of um, rambunctious rapscallions and um, knuckleheads, we would jump on the 50 yard line of an opponent and, I guess disrespected. Um, that's what, you know, if you didn't like it, you just stop us and you beat us in the game and we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't have the energy to do that, but we definitely we called it whooping it up and we did that. And then um, some of their guys decided that they hadn't exerted enough energy in the game. So they needed to take two L's that night. So they, um, they took They got the opportunity to have another L, um, which is why when last year, when the guys wanted to go plant the flag and, or when Nick Chubb spit on the, the logo and all this other stuff. I'm not one of those people who are like, you're supposed to go defend it and you're supposed to go fight and do all this other BS. Do that in the game. Whoop ass in the game. You ain't got to worry about somebody disrespecting you. And I think that's – you got to get back to that, really. If we want – bump the rivalry, that's part of it. But Florida State's got to get back to imposing their will and being bullies because right now we enjoy being bullied, and that's just not Florida State – that as Odo would say, that's not the that's not the Florida State way. I do want to give a special shout out to Gus Scott in that 2003 game because I do distinctly remember I was in that south end zone with a bunch of Gators, and I remember him distinctly doing the, the the chop, and then he did the throat slash, and then he got beat by PK Sam the next play. So special shout out to Gus Scott wherever the heck he is right now. So. Florida, a 17-point favorite in this one. Uh, and and uh, so the Gators obviously uh, having a decent season with the two losses that yeah. Jason mentions. Well, and uh, George is talking and team that Jason. Can we talk? George is talking a lot of smack here. but George I, I understand that. Let me finish my statement. Okay. Ten wins last year under Dan Mullen in his first season after the uh, aforementioned 4-8 and eight campaign. Uh, Nine and two right now. And, uh, yes, we, we understand uh, George likes to talk a lot, and he gives uh, Florida State – George makes those comments to every game every week. So, Ma, so this Ma, is really Ma. nothing nothing you know, unique about the Florida State game. Mazel talk to George. Zero percent chance of winning. Right, because there's absolutely no chance. There is, is absolutely no chance. That's what George wants us to say. Well, George. There's a zero percent chance of them winning by less than 20. You are, so this are is losing what George by does. Right. So George is George is a psychic. He he knows right now the, the game doesn't even be played. Florida State can save their money. On, on bus fare, plane fare, however they're going to get to to Gainesville. I don't. I don't. Do they have an airport in Gainesville? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how they're going to get there. 
Uh, but yeah, don't worry, George. Don't worry. Fist fight. Now, oh, big, big, big words there. Fist fight. Jason, what's your percentage chance of winning for Florida State in this one? Like if, if they play 10 times, 100 times. If you're asking me as the as a biased FSU graduate and, and loyal fan, of course, I'm going to say it's a 50-50 shot. If you're asking me realistically as a, as a as a college football expert, I'd probably say Florida State has a 20 to 30% shot. I think – and, and we'll talk about this as the hour goes on. It's it's the rivalry, and 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 James talked about it a little bit right there. There's been plenty of times when Florida State was supposed to destroy Florida, and Florida has come out on top. There's been plenty of times when Florida was supposed to destroy Florida State, and the Knolls came out on top. So anything is possible. Is Florida State going to have to play their best game for it to get done this year? Absolutely, because the 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 where the teams are right now is so vastly different. To sit there, my argument is the, to sit there and say there is absolutely no chance that Florida State can win this game is, is to me, insane. Can Florida State get blown out like they did last year? Of course. Absolutely. I'll be the first person to admit that. But can Florida State realistically go into Gainesville and get an upset win? Yes. There's no, no question about it. Let's mark it down right now. This is our 27th edition. Logan, mark this down. This is the first time I think Jason and I actually agree. I'll, I'll go the wow. 20 to 25% range as well. What? Okay. I think that's, that's shocking. reasonable. 25% what? chance of winning. Logan, it's a, it's a None of this is huge. One thing that I think, and, and James can probably <laughs> talk on. 25% chance, huh? <laughs> Realistically, in my, in, my, in my heart, 50%. In my head, 25%. That's a little. I All right, Logan, what's your thoughts? I'm going to say going into Gainesville 730 at night, a very talented and good team and, and has a pretty good coach too there. Uh, it's a lot different than these older, these few coaches that we've had to deal with in, in Gainesville. I'm going to go about a 15% chance on my end. What do you got, James? What kind of puncher's chance do you have, James, in this one? Uh, that's about all we have is a puncher's chance. Um, and I, I'm going to give it 15. I'm, and this is my reason why. I I just don't have any – between losing Marvin Wilson, um, oh. Harlan Barnett's defense, um, versus the ability for uh, Dan Mullen to scheme up plays, and unlike most fans, I I have lost all faith in Kendall Browns and his offense. And I, I'm not, I can't be swayed by some of the, the stuff that we hear about, you know, who's calling plays and all those other things. Because again, I know how it's supposed to work. Like, even if somebody tells you to run the play, like the offensive coordinator's job is to coordinate. And we don't look coordinated. It doesn't matter who calls the plays. We don't even look like we're lined up right with the true offensive coordinator. And though we've put up stats um, and numbers in the last two games, it was against Boston College, one of the worst defenses in the nation. And it was at HBCU. And while I have HBCU pride and I love my HBCUs, I'm just not thinking that they're on the same caliber level as Florida. So if we can't, we can't dominate out the gate against Alabama State, and we have these slow starts that we've had the last two games, and we can't dominate out the gate, with um, Boston College, I just have a very hard um, time thinking that we'll be able to um, exploit a, a Ty Grantham defense um, who's going to blitz, and, and they got a very good D-lineman, uh, and they have a really talented secondary. So it's just being – right now I'm being honest. Like if we had – if I saw the Kendall Browse that I was sold and I saw that all year – I would have a much different perspective and be like, maybe we can win a shootout. But I don't necessarily I, – and, and I'm saying this with the hope of hopes that I'm wrong and that people critique me about it. But I don't believe we put up enough points. I believe I, I don't believe we put up over 17. Because I've also seen Kendall – I also looked at Kendall Browns against ranked teams, mm -hmm. and I've seen seven. I've seen seven, 17, 10, like things that make me, that make me a little bit afraid. James, you're not the only one who's been mad at Kendall Browse. I cursed him out from Section 27 during the Miami game. So I've been literally screaming for him. I'm so disappointed in what we've seen uh, from him at points this season. My confidence comes from the fact that, yes, 100%, 
Boston College is a team that, that needs to win just to be bowl eligible. And yes, Alabama State is a is a much better HBCU than we thought they were when we signed the contract last year for that game. But they're still ultimately an FCF program and HBCU. So you're supposed to win that game 49 to 12 the way we did. I think right now my number being in the 25 to 30 range is because of the fact that this is a playing as a more confident team. It, it, could it be false confidence, and could they come out and play like hot garbage against Florida? Of course. I am 100% mentally prepared for the idea that Florida State could get blown out for a second straight year to their hated rivals. But I think that that it's all out there, and I think the option, the chance is out there for Florida State to play better because this is a much more confident team on November 26th than it was on, on November 2nd at uh, 7.30 p.m. after the loss to Miami. And by the way, for the writer down there, Mazel Tov is M-A-Z-E-L, not M-O-Z-E-L. Throwing that out there real quick. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. Uh, so this is what we do each and every week as we talk Florida State football for one full hour. We have uh, settled on a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time each and every week. we got big game James Coleman on the line from fifth quarter college football. So join him right there. You got Logan Robinson from Noel game day and Jason Parker from chop chat. Yeah. And I'm uh, merely Mark Rogers, the voice of college football. So we have rivalry uh, posts coming out all week previews all over the place of all the major rivalries. So please lock it in right here. And uh, I think this brings us to a coaching search is what this brings us to. And this thing's been going on now for about, three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. And I understand James had something to say about this uh, online here recently. So I would love, since we've been talking coaches, as you can imagine, ever since it opened up, to I've heard enough from these two knuckleheads. So James, <laughs> we need to hear from you. Hey. Who I'm will it be? Who it should it be? I'm we ain't putting no predictions out. <laughs> when I touch the hot stove, I'm not touching it again. James at, two, James, at 2.45 p.m., you wrote a lot of stuff talking about three main names. And, and, and the main names, of course, is Iowa State head coach Matt Campbell, Penn State head coach James Franklin, and Memphis head coach Mike Norvell. So here's my question to you. Number one, why are those three names? Why are they the three that you think are the best shot? And why are there two names that you didn't mention, Bob Stoops and Mark Stoops? Well, Mark Stoops, if Mark Stoops becomes the head coach of Florida State, um, what's his name, George, on the chat? On the chat um, I need George to teach me some things on how to be a Florida Gator. What? Um, I think he was a, he was a, at least for the times that he's there, I just yes. think he's inept. I think he's white Willie Tiger, if I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're, we're moving beyond that. Now, uh, now Bob? Yeah. Um, you love Bob. My, my sources, I, I don't love, one, I don't love Bob. I just um, mm -hmm. believe Bob is possibly the, um, I believe Bob is is that guy. Um, I, I mean, it's from what my sources tell me. We've been wrong before. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but I've, I mean, I'm. I, that's my shot. That was my shot in the dark. That was my guess um, based on reliable information. And until I hear something that's really firm, I'm probably not going to go off of him not being that. And I will say this, based upon the information that I've read, um, none of the, the big four, as as some jerk calls it, um, know what the hell is going on either. And their sources have dried up as well. Here's Mike Norvell has some issues. Um, and I don't I don't think he would be a coach here. That uh, I mean, I would like him. I like what he's done, but I don't think he would be there. James Franklin – couple guys that I know who know him say that this might be more of a a Jimbo to LSU. Um, not really necessarily trying to do it, but, you know, I don't know if he – I don't think Penn State allows him to walk away. I mean, Penn State's a good job, and he doesn't have the expectations at Penn State that he would have when he comes to Florida State. Um, and Matt Campbell – Matt Campbell has especially said that he's not even – he's not even paying attention until after the season. So that means, like, while he may have had some, some, some feelers out there, that the recruiting of him would not be able to start until after until Sunday, which to me is um, is not good. And 
I just want a coach that can build and that I don't want a coach that's better than Will. I want a coach that's good enough for Florida State. Now, if we're not going to get Bob Stoops, then it should have then it should be take the coach O and take the um Dabo Sweeney approach and go get the best coordinator. And it may not work that way either, but at least it'll be cheaper. You don't you don't fire a guy in the middle of, with 4 weeks left into the season with 20 million, you don't you don't launch a major fundraising campaign mm-hmm. to try to bring in millions and millions of dollars um to hire a coach that's not a splash hire. Um I don't want below 500 coaches anymore if we can manage to not have that. I just believe Florida State's a big program and that sh- that that if we be- and if we believe we're um the class or, or one of the top really just truly one of the top 25 jobs in football it's time for us to start behaving in a manner in which. And, yes, I got caught up in the Tiger thing. There was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of hope. Um, no matter who the next coach is, I'll have a lot of hope for that person as well, being as I'm alumni. But from a – just a, a perspective of the outside looking in, very few of those names strike me as sexy. Besides, I mean, like I said, I like Campbell, what he's done with Little, and I like Franklin, but – there's so many other things that you have, uh, so many other factors being the FH coach that um, but we'll go into it. But, um, yeah, I, I, um, like I said, I'm I'm not predicting any more coaches, but I have my faith in who I believe the coach will be. No, my, my question too, James, is I'm going to sit there and I, I will be the Willie Tiger defender. I still think he got screwed out of being fired way too quickly. I don't think 21 games is enough to – to hire or fire a coach or do anything like that. And I think the fact that FSU doesn't have – doesn't seem like they have a plan in place is a joke for why you fire a coach with three games left. But my question to you is this. Let's let's be optimistic for a second and say James Franklin is not a Jimbo Fisher to, to LSU approach. Let's say that it's a legitimate option. Why would you not be why, – why you don't seem as high on James Franklin? I mean, he's done well. He's got a te- – he's going to likely – I mean – Unless Rutgers pulls an upset of the century, you have another 10-win season at a, a Big Ten school, a power program. He's done well to help turn that program around after a horrible, you know, controversy that went on with, you know, the Jerry Sandusky situation. Why not give him a shot? He didn't necessarily turn it around, but, yeah, he's done he a did. fine job he at did. Penn State. He turned it, he turned it around from, from the moment of making it back to being where Penn State was. So that my question would be, do you have the faith that he could if James Franklin were to, you know, let's say in a perfect world situations turn out, do you think – do you give him – a legitimate chance to turn around the FSU program. Well, just to clarify, Bill O'Brien took over the program from Joe Paterno. Yeah. Franklin turned the one up. that put it on good ground. But he's James the one that really bridged the gap and held it together when that could have been, that was the stigma of stigmas in college football. And for him to hold that together as well as he did and win seven and eight games in two years, he really held it together. James Franklin did his resurgence there at uh, Vanderbilt. I'm sorry, James. Really I'm sorry James. I forgot all Big Ten questions must go through Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college. Really, all questions go through me. I just choose to, to jump so, on. So, so, so now, now that we're done with, with our Big Ten course, yeah, to be the voice of college football. Yeah. What, what is your? Thought? I have to make the corrections when I need to. Go ahead, James. Go, please. I, I just, yeah, I mean, O'Brien was the guy who definitely came in and steadied it before he went to, um, to the to. to um, but I think Franklin making Vanderbilt into a bowl program shows that you know he's really a- he's able to do what's necessary. I've heard I've, I know some guys who've gone up there on recruiting visits and heard him talk. It's um, nothing but nothing but good nothing but positive things have been said about about him. Um, I think. Could he come down to Tallahassee? I think the biggest thing is that whoever takes the job has to the 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 admin has to know and boosters have to know that this is you got to give him five years no matter what, even if it looks bad. Um, it's things that have to happen that you got to be able to um, persevere through. Um, there's some guys that are on the roster that probably need to be ran off um, or or I hate to say cut, but but done away with, and you're definitely not going to be able to do it in year one with the way that early signing is. And the class hasn't taken a hit yet, but depending upon who you hire, the class will take some hits. 
Now, a name like James Franklin probably will get some guys who were evaluated at Penn State that will be now interested in Florida State. But at the same time, this is, um, you know, you're putting them, they, they have to know they'll be behind the eight ball, which is just a crappy position to be in. So that's why you have to hire guys who are developers of talent. And I'm, um, that's why I'm more interested in, I guess, if I had to pick somebody, the, I guess it would be, it'd be Bob and Franklin, Franklin and Campbell would be, um, 2A and 2 um, See, I, I, I don't get the Matt Campbell. I, I really don't. And I and I get oh. he's a good coach, but I don't get how Matt Campbell is the, the sexy front runner in some people's opinion. I, I think, you know, Iowa State was supposed to be the team that's supposed to compete with Oklahoma, you know, in the Big Ten and Big 12 this year, and they haven't really done it. So I just I, – I guess my concern is, number one, you're going from Iowa State. You're saying that that's your target as a, as a coach from Iowa State or a Mike Norvell from Memphis. To me – you know, and I, I get that Bob Stoops was the sexy pick for the old school alumni, the old school, you know, boosters and whatnot. But to me, and, and James Franklin has a reasonable buyout. It's a million dollar buyout. It's a lot better than a lot of other coaches. So to me, if you're going to get a coach and you're going to put money behind this and, and, and we all, you know, those of us boosters have gotten our emails and whatnot from, you know, hey, give us more money. You know, if, if you want a coach, to me, I think you have to go after – someone big and I think if you can get James Franklin to leave a 10 win Penn State program you know that won the Big Ten in 2016 and have him come to Florida State I think yeah I, I think that's too much of a good thing to pass up the easy answer on Matt Campbell is that Iowa State was winning three and four games before he got there and now they're winning eight games and even in the games that they lose they're ultra competitive they lost to Oklahoma on a two-point conversion try uh, this year, they're they're playing with uh, everybody that they play. They get embarrassed by no one. I'm they sorry, should have beaten Iowa what, this year. Is, they're just so significantly better than they were before. I forgot Matt Campbell's from that's the state. Why I like, I talk about him. I apologize. Yeah. that's why I like Matt. But I got I keep getting these. Everybody's calling me right now, so I don't want to keep having to get rebroadcast in it. But um, so I gotta I gotta go. Unfortunately, but um, man. Um, I would happy Thanksgiving, and hopefully this ain't the last summer. This ain't the yeah. last meal. James is back. And Thanks, James. James. We appreciate it. Happy All Thanksgiving, right. yeah, James. See you, man. By the way, just to correct you on something real quick, uh, Mark Rogers TV, the West College. Oh, oh boy, they're, they're, that should be a good one. They're seven and four this season. They're not an eight-win program. As for right now, they're seven and four. Just throwing them oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, they're seven and four. Yeah. They, they do uh, have I, a bowl I, game. I, they I, do have a bowl game and an extra regular season game. But uh, I feel like I have to correct it when when, when corrections need to be made. What do you? Corrections think? need to be made when corrections are incorrect. That leaves the original statement as it still stands. Go Kansas State, Logan. What do you? So it's still like an eighty-four to nothing score between Jason and myself. <laughs> All right, Jason. Uh, let's let's let Logan talk. I think he said like three words today. I just no, that's said, fine. I've I've been so so we're going to the whole time too. I that's got right. Uh, Logan's waiting for a phone call as well. I but, know. Uh, I, I would like to get each one of your short lists on a realistic candidate for a coach and yeah. who you want. Mark, let him talk, please. Let them <sighs> Don't even start. Don't even start. You can have you can you tell that we've been with each other for 27 weeks? We have. This uh, is this is this might be my uh, second in 2019. Go ahead. Um I like Bob Stoops, of course. I think as having experience that helps a lot. Um my second choice is James Franklin. I think discipline is what is needed in Tallahassee, and I think he's got some good experience. I like him as a coach. He's got he brings a lot of energy, which I think this team would like too. Um and number three. This is an interesting one. I'm kind of like, I'm like in between a few of them. I know there's Norvell, but I think he needs to be in a bigger conference play here. I like, I'd probably go Matt Campbell too. I mean, those three have been on my list since almost the beginning. I know we've been, we heard a lot of names right away, but uh, Bob Stoops, and we, we talked about this a few weeks ago and I'm sure last week, but for this program that it's in right now, that is in a kind of – it's almost in, in, in disaster mode, it feels like. You know, we were had a high – a good 10s, you know, 2013, 2014, 2015, and then it just starts – and 2016 starts falling down very quickly. A few key players keep this team alive. Uh, going back to Dalvin Cook keeps these games uh, within reach. But, I mean – 
right now, Bob Stoops can come in. Um, obviously, he'd want to put a staff around him. Uh, that, that might be what this whole renaissance thing is with bringing a lot of money in. He wants to bring in not only staff, uh, a, a good loaded staff, but also um, uh, uh, even more, I don't know, like an army around him for recruiting analysts, kind of like what Nick Saban has at, at um, Alabama. He would have a, a gigantic staff, and I think that's what f- either Florida State is preparing for or something in that regard because right now Thrasher is sending mail everywhere that the president Thrasher at Florida State is sending mail to everybody trying to bring in money. Something's going on, um, and now this whole contract thing with Willie Taggart is pretty interesting too. Um, I know, uh, what is it, Tampa Bay Times reported that he didn't sign his contract. They didn't even sign a contract. It was just an agreement. And then I think someone else reported yesterday that there was an agreement or that there was, he did sign something. I don't know. It's all over the place. So Florida States and it's just in the whole, either we're not, either there's something going on in the back end that's, that's, we don't know of that is actually right after the UF game, either on Sunday or Monday, it will be announced that the, the coach will be there if it is stoops, but something's happening to where Florida state is wanting to bring in a ton of money. Um, and that's probably to prepare for someone that is a well experienced, a well experienced coach that is beyond what Willie Taggart brought into Florida State. I'll, I'll say this: we had somebody this week who we wrote a column on ChopChat.com saying why James Franklin would be the is the best option out there right now, and there were several different several different of our readers who wrote comments saying, "Hard pass, I don't want him. I want Matt Campbell." To me. Why? Why do you want somebody who's getting seven wins in the Big 12, which is an easier conference to do things in because they can play defense there, as opposed to getting 10 wins in the Big 10 East, arguably the toughest division in all of college football? So that's why, to me, my number one option would be James Franklin. I think, and and once again, this could be a pipe dream like those who, who, who have been praising Bob Stoops and saying that Bob Stoops is going to be the next coach, and he may be. Who knows? And I may be just in a pipe dream world of saying James Franklin, but if the option is out there, I think James Franklin has to be that number one target. After that, I would – it's tough because I do agree with Logan. I think you do have to go with a bigger name, uh, somebody from a bigger conference. To me, Mike Norvell at Memphis, you know, it, it's still Memphis football. To me, I think it's the same thing you're seeing with Scott Frost at Nebraska. Yeah, he was a great coach at UCF. Now that he's playing in the big boy conference – you see what's going on out there. I'm not sold on Matt Campbell. And I'm going to use this argument here. If Florida State does pull off the upset and does beat Florida, that's hmm. not Odell Higgins. It's a legitimate argument. Odell Higgins then, if if Florida State does pull off the upset and beat Florida, would be 5-0 and as the interim coach, would have wins at Florida, would have the last bowl winning program history in the Independence Bowl over Southern Miss, would have the three wins, both Louisiana Monroe in 2017 and Boston College and Alabama State that got us bowl eligible this season. It's a legitimate argument. I'm not saying he won't get an interview. I'm not saying that he may not get hired. But the argument, you look at what Dabo did at Clemson when he got hired. You look at what Ed Orgeron has done at LSU. I mean, he's got the number two in the playoff rankings right now after Ohio State somehow jumped them. Bogus. Mm-hmm. But you've got this argument. Why not Odell? I mean that it's going to be, it's interesting because it's going to be either an argument between two, both sides where I think the, the boosters play a big role in this mm-hmm. also because money wise and boy, do they want, they probably are really fighting for someone experienced. And then if you go to Odell Higgins, of course, if he gets that win, that explodes his chances of having it. I don't think he will be the coach, but it does make his chances a lot better. I mean, you're beating a very good Florida team this year in Gainesville. Um, and uh, you got some staff, you got some staff leaving, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a train wreck almost, but, and, and, le- and if Odell does, you also got to like think back at how many players FSU have, has lost this season. I mean, it, it's been, it's just been a, a tough season overall for Florida state university, well, but. So you- just to put the, uh, the scales on James Franklin versus Matt Campbell, I, I can agree with much of your argument there, Jason, but some of it, I, I think needs a little clarification because. There we what- go. What James Franklin is doing. Yeah, this is what we have to do. We have to run through everything. (laughs) This is it. And and, and now the state of Ohio opinion with Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football opinion. opinion. This is the voice of college football opinion. 
Go ahead. Uh, this is the national perspective. So I, 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 I let you guys talk about Florida State, and I certainly have to jump in sometimes when we need to get some proper perspective on some things. Go ahead. So with uh, James Franklin in particular, yes, has he done a fine job at Penn State? Yes, he's done a good, solid job at Penn State. He's done nothing historic there. That was done by Joe Paterno decades ago. He is basically one at the level at which, well, not to the level of Joe Paterno, but at the level that you would expect any competent coach would at Penn State. He has tons of money, resources, recruiting base, all of those things at his disposal, and he's done a decent job. He's done a nice job. Uh, he had a couple seven and six campaigns when they were still trying to clean up the mess and separate themselves from the Jerry Sandusky. So that's certainly understandable. Then he won a Big Ten championship, as you mentioned, went to the Rose Bowl. Since then, uh, they've been very good teams. They've been top, top 10 to 15 teams in the nation the last three years that aren't able to handle Ohio State, which is no shame in that. Uh, and basically, that's where he is. He actually did his best work, I think, at Vanderbilt, where he took over a program that much like Iowa State, and probably not even to the level of Iowa State, was winning two, three, four games a year, generally, and he won nine games there two consecutive years. So he did a fine job at Vanderbilt, which is obviously a very difficult place to win. Uh, probably did it at a time that was a sweet spot in the SEC East, where it was a little bit down, but still an outstanding job he did there. Uh, Matt Campbell, though, is winning historically at Iowa State. Uh, they haven't won like that in forever. So just just to put a take on both resumes right now. Uh, where, where you, there's just so many inherent advantages at Penn State that you can't compare winning percentages at Penn State and Iowa State. Can you just tell everyone where Matt Campbell's from? Just want to throw that out real quick. Where's he? From? I don't know where he's from. He's from the state of Ohio. He's from, oh. uh, he's from <laughs> the mecca of, let's see, was it? Uh, hold on a second. Thank you, Wikipedia. I have no idea where Matt. I know he, is, he coached um, at the University of Toledo. He's from Massillon, Ohio. I have no idea where that is. It's in the state of Ohio. Nothing uh, to do with it. I am it's analyzing the two state. gentlemen's performances Look, on the job. Matt Campbell and is and they're they're comparable. It's not a slam dunk. Uh, they're not comparable. Oh, no, 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 oh, no. Oh, they're, they're they're not, and if they're not comparable, Matt jo Matt Campbell has done a much better job no. than James Franklin no. if they're not comparable. No, no, but no, they no, are no, comparable. No, no, no. There is an argument they're there. Not. It's not a slam dunk on either side because James Franklin, I could go to Penn State and probably win seven games. No, you could. Like 100 people out there could. No, you could. Because could've. it's I'm been sorry. done for the last no. 60 years. No, they have not. Number not one, at Iowa State, yeah. though. Every coach that no they've one. run through Iowa State no. goes 2-10, and 3-9 and nine until Matt Campbell got there. And now they're a respectable team in the Big 12 that wins eight games and goes to bowl games and plays Oklahoma down to a two-point conversion. And they've and been doing this know. since he arrived. Hold on. Let me get my red pen out here and correct you for a moment there. Real okay, quick. correct me. Oh, I said uh, you're wrong. Number one. You can try to correct me, but it's probably dead wrong because I don't state anything that if I don't know something, I just don't state it. I just leave it alone. Are you, are you oh, when we said something about Matt Campbell, where he's from, are I just flat out said, I have no idea because I didn't not? know. But if I know something, I'll not? state it. If I don't know something, it goes unsaid. Wrap it up. Are you done? Are you done? Uh, for Number now. One. Number one, you wouldn't win 10 games at Penn State. You would barely win four games. Okay. I didn't say I would win 10 games. You see Number that one, uh, right out of the gate. Okay. First of all, it's hyperbole. It's Number called one. hyperbole, Jason. What? It's called hyperbole. Can Number I one. Number two, I said seven games. Are you going to gonna continue to interrupt me or not? I will interrupt you okay, to try ahead. to make up for the last 27 weeks. Logan, Week 27, here we are. Logan, 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 Daddy still loves you. Mommy still loves you too. We still love you, buddy. Okay, but we, Mommy and Daddy, have to talk about something for a moment. Oh, whoa. So number one, number one, number two. To sit here and say that Matt Campbell's performance at Iowa State is the same or on par with James Franklin at Penn State is an insult to James Franklin. No, it's not an insult to James Franklin. I thought he did a fine job, but he's got so many inherent advantages over an Iowa State coach, it's not even close. If if Illinois hires a new coach tomorrow, are we expecting that coach or Lovey Smith to win as much as Ryan Day at Ohio State? James Franklin came in two years That's the comparison. James That's almost Franklin, a like perfect comparison, right, right there. James Franklin came in two years after arguably one of the worst moments in college football history. And yes, well, uh, here, sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't want to 
don't want to be corrected later by by the teacher real quick on this well, one. You had to be Bill because you said Dan Franklin took over Bill the Jerry Sandusky situation. He didn't. Bill O'Brien did. Bill O'Brien came in and he was the coach he, after Joe Paterno. I got that. That's fine. But James Franklin has been the one to bring Penn State football back to what Penn State was during the Joe Paterno years. He has a chance, if he wins against Rutgers, to have three 10-plus win seasons over a four-year period. That's what Penn State football is. Absolutely. He has experience winning at a much better program. And to me, a, a first of all, a 10-win season at Penn State dwarfs an 8-win season at Iowa State. So my, oh, my oh, opinion oh, oh. Go find the 10 opinion. seasons at Penn State, and I'll find the 8 win seasons at Iowa State. You'll find a ton more at Penn State than I will at Iowa State. It's much more of an accomplishment winning eight games at Iowa State than winning 10 at Penn State. It's been done forever at Penn State. It's not been done at Iowa State. Hold on. Let's look at how many 10 win seasons there were at Penn State. I There's a... You want to count the eight win seasons at Iowa State versus the 10 win seasons at Penn State. Let's go since 1970. Okay, since 19. It's not even close. 1970. <laughs> You're going to be counting a while. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 seasons. 21, well, out of 21 50 times they've won t at least 10 21 games. 21 out of 50 seasons, Penn State has okay, won. Okay, how many times has Iowa State, State won eight games since 1970? James James Franklin brought Probably Penn State. Five. James Franklin brought Penn State back to what Penn State football was supposed to be. Absolutely, James, he did. Franklin, James Franklin. The question was, who do we want? Who would our choices be? And to me, James Franklin has a better chance to bring full Florida State football back to what it was when I grew up watching it. When James Coleman played for them, when they were a dynasty program, then Matt Campbell. I think Matt Campbell is the sexy flavor of the month moment excuse me, flavor of the month coach right now, James Franklin is the long-term coach that I believe can turn around. What you uh, just said is the most accurate thing you said because we don't know. That's speculation, and you might be right. James Franklin might be a better hire. I'm just comparing the job that James Franklin's done at Penn State with the job that Matt Campbell's done at Iowa State. That's that's all I'm doing. And it's I'm not telling you who's better prepared. You have every right to say, I want James Franklin as my head coach, and that's not a, I wouldn't sit here and say, you're crazy. He's done a good job. He's a good coach. One, two, he knows how to recruit. Three, I don't know that he's the best game tactician in the world, but he knows how to recruit. Four, five, six. It's not coming up to 21. Seven. And if it does, I'm going to have to double check it. No, it's not 21. It's just under. It's at seven. Um, just under 21. Uh, Thank uh, you. I proved my point. 21 10 win seasons at Penn uh, State, seven eight win seasons at and Iowa State. And we'll, and Thank would, you. Would you argue that before James Franklin got there, in the two seasons before James Franklin got there, Penn State was under, arguably, they were in a situation of being the worst program in the country in terms of what they were going through and basically having to rebuild that program. No power program has had to go through that kind of controversy and moment. And for James Franklin to be able to do that and come in and two years after, excuse me, in his third season as coach after he came in, win the Big Ten. And now we're going on, he's going to have three 10-win seasons, seasons of, excuse me, of 10 wins or more in a four-season period. Well, let's understand that he that. did a fine job in winning a Big Ten championship, but they were five seasons removed from that debacle at that point. O'Brien right. took over in 12. Wait, O'Brien coached in 12 and 13. Then Franklin went seven and six in 14 and 15. And then they won a Big Ten title the fifth season removed from that disaster. Oh, he was given more than 21 games to turn around a program. Huh. He didn't turn around the program. That's another point I've made 18 times. Uh, Bill O'Brien okay. turned the program. He he did the, the most difficult to work. Bill O'Brien Bill O'Brien was a substitute teacher. He was like you as, as a substitute. He was teacher. exceptional. I, he took I, over when that was a mess, when that was a nightmare, a public relations nightmare. By the time James Franklin got there, yeah, he was still suffering from scholarship reductions and all of that, but it was all football related. He didn't have to deal with that mess. Bill O'Brien did all that. Logan, how was school today? Did you, did you enjoy school today? Did you I don't have any class today. I'm enjoying my break starting now. Oh, nice. Enjoying, Congratulations. I'm enjoying it. I get to come here. I am I swear next time I will bring popcorn. I will have yeah. popcorn more. You know what? Celebrate this with us. Crack open a natty ice right now. For no, I, I actually upgraded. I actually upgraded. I actually upgraded. I, uh, Wait, you got now it. we're on a uh, Natty Daddy.
You got financial aid kid in? What happened here? Yeah, something happened. Something happened. I'm just getting ready for the UF game, and I'm ready to see who whoever the coach is going to be. But we got a biggie this weekend on Saturday. Are you going to live stream intoxicated from the game? Uh, if Mark uh, is ready for that, and this, uh, I don't think he's too ready for that one yet. There's I'm around too many idiots. I don't trust my friends. I trust myself, but I don't trust my friends. If he goes viral, I'm ready for it. I don't think you're allowed to live stream from the Alachua County Jail. I think we might want to check on. Uh, I have to ask what my friends are going. No, no. I'm. I mean, the whole coaching thing to me is pretty interesting. I, I think it's been awfully quiet. Right off the rails, it was talk Bob Soups, Bob Soups, and it was everything Bob Soups. And then there was rumors that it could be announced the other day. I mean, War Chan and, and some other outlets. The other, uh, there, there were. He's going to announce it two days after Willie Tiger's been fired that Bob Soups is going to be the coach. Blah blah. I didn't think that was going to happen, but something. It, it, it's just been weird because it's been quiet this last this week and then last week too, dead silent. Um, it, it's going to be interesting to see uh, right after the UF game. I mean, next week there's really uh, should be a, a coach name. This they're going to have to start finding. They're going to have to announce someone because recruiting is coming and, and going to play a big toll here. It is pretty interesting also that Jeff Sims is still there. Your your bell. Uh, cows are still committed to Florida State. Look at Miami; it's all over the place. But it's Wait, interesting. either they know something. I hold swear, on. Hold they on. know something more than uh, any of us do. Can, can we go back to that previous comment, or, or do we have that ability? What, what was it? For the last one before this right stuff, it was uh, fake, whatever. It was the long one talking about Odell. Odell Hagan's talking in press conferences. Uh, okay. That's why he's not head coaching. From, from who? It says that it was talking about how have you ever heard Odell Hagan's talk at a press conference? That's why he's not head coaching material. I have you heard Ed Orgeron speak? Ed yeah. Orgeron sounds like Farmer Fran from the Water Boy. This one right here. Are you kidding me? Number one, if that's why you're going to hire a coach is because of, of how they may sound at a press conference, then leave the FSU fan base right there. Number one. Number two, Ed Orgeron sounds like Farmer Fran, and he's the number two. Rank, he's coaching the number two ranked team in the country right now. So feet seven six five one zero two. Shut up. Let's pick this game. Can we pick this game already? I got. Some Jeez. I got to Jeez, went right after him. That because, was... Sorry, that's that's bogus. It's the same people who attack Florida State and attack Willie Taggart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too much rap music at the game. Guess what? Well, uh, same amount of rap music as every other place in the country. The difference is we weren't winning the games. That's why. If you want to attack Willie Taggart for losing games, that's fine. I get it. But if you want to attack him because oh, we played too much hip hop music, get a life. Moving on. I was, I was going to talk about Willie Tiger and how much I didn't like how mellow he was in press conferences and smiling. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can we pick this game? This is the point that we're at with Florida State right now. Game. Everybody's mad. Everybody doesn't like it. Press we'll two. Press two. Fine. You know what? You know one thing? Of, ah, cat, stop. Sorry. Good God. <laughs> I've got two cats around me. I don't know what's happening. Sure. It's you at week, baby. It's you. I, I don't have any school right now. I'm ready to talk to some FSU. We got, we got five more minutes, too. Ever since we moved to Tuesday, this show's gone off the rails. Logan, can we talk? All right, give your top, Jason, your top three keys to this game for Florida State to win it. Pull top, top three keys to this game. Number one on offense, can, is Cam Akers healthy? He obviously missed the Alabama State game. Uh, we don't know exactly what the injury was, but he, he – Odell Higgins did say if we had played Florida that week, he wouldn't have been able to play. So let's thank God he has had two more weeks to repair. So I want to see how healthy he's going to be, number one. Number two, is our secondary ready to stop Kyle Trask? Arguably, he's a much better quarterback than Felipe Franks. You've watched him this year. We're talking about 2,300 yards already, 21 touchdowns. And let's be honest, our secondary is not good. So can they contain him, keep him somewhere around 300 yards, and basically – uh, keep them in, you know, in some fighting chance. And I guess my big thing would be, does this team have the heart? It had the heart to get to a bowl game. They are bowl eligible. That monkey is off their back right now. Do they have the heart to go in and avoid being swept in back-to-back -back seasons by their in-state rivals for the first time since 85 and 86? You weren't even born yet. I was a wee little lad just out of diapers. Let's, you know, can, can we avoid – getting swept two years in a row. We cannot be smack talk two straight seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, the number one, I agree with Jason Cam Akers. If he's fully healthy, I think they were smart. He did not need to play in the Alabama state game whatsoever. Uh, he has beaten his rushing uh, career record. He has had a great season. Um, so Cam Akers will play a vital role. And if Florida state is going to stand a chance in this game. Um, second, I'm going to go with James Blackman's play. Obviously he's played some poor opponents the last two 
games, but he does look better than he has throughout the season. He looks a little bit more on key with things. His accuracy is better, and I like his long ball. That has been fixed, which is great. And if Tamara and Terry and them can connect well, there should be some chances for them to at least get down the field and score some points either with Aguayo um, or with Cam Akers there. Uh, but James Blackman is going to play a key role, and that might still go uh, with along with Jordan Travis and how Kendall Bryles um, – coaches this game i still give hope like james was giving uh kendall bryles some heat earlier i still have some hope in kendall bryles i do think it is unorganized at times which is very annoying we saw it with tagger too but i do think the quarterback play is going to be huge and then discipline 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 on saturday if they can play discipline don't get the stupid penalties don't lie make sure you're lining up correctly don't do don't don't be so quick um i hope james blackman it seems like he's a little bit more settled down now but don't run it so quickly. Don't be so fast with things. I think um, Florida State, that's going to be their their keys to having a chance with this game in Gainesville on Saturday night. Clemson alum 98, uh, Florida State getting 17 and a half by my uh, sources is Ooh. what the point spread is right now. Ooh. Give me those points. Mm. I will have my prediction at uh, our Voice of College Football Community link in the description section below. Just go there, 11-6 and six against the spread last week, 57% uh, against the spread on the season, 77% uh, straight up. Logan, give us your pick. Let's see here. Come on. Usually I'm, a- usually I'm able to have my score prediction already done before because we record our podcast on Tuesday night, so I can't, I can't, I don't have mine yet, but I have it right here. It's about to come up. Uh Mm, I'm going to go Florida State. Mm, Florida State 17. Uh, Florida. Florida 30. 17. All right. So you're giving FSU the points. All right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Seems reasonable. Mark Rogers. Yes. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Tonight, we've loved, we fought. <laughs> The world needs to know how much we love each other. And because we love each other, I'm going to let you know that Mark Rogers TV is going to join me in picking the Florida State Seminoles. Oh, my. The Florida Gators. I do think think that it's going to be a different world. I do think, you know, first of all, I was going to pick them. Even if we were 0-11, I hate the Gators so much that I I will never (laughs) pick them ever. But I do legitimately think, all joking aside, that I think that this team – does have a decent amount of heart. I think they have enough. And I think the fact that they're not playing with the same pressure that they had last year is going to help them big time. So I'm going to say in an upset, Florida State 34, Florida 31. And for the first time in the series history, the home team does not win in an entire decade. I'll tell you what, though, real quick. I will say Florida State has a better chance of beating Florida under Odell Higgins rather than Willie Tiger. I will, I will put money on it too. I might agree with that. Uh, <laughs> I certainly don't see, I certainly don't see Florida state scoring 34 points against Florida, but that's Wait, what was the score? Wait, what was that again? 34, 31. Oh, <laughs> hold up. I need to, I need to get in the fridge real quick. Go ahead. And we have Clemson alum 98 uh, sticking up for the ACC as well. Florida state wins 27, 24 in a shocker. Mark Rogers. Yeah, picking up shock. Mark's picking up SU with me. I, I think I think we all generally agreed, even though you guys found some kind of distinction. I didn't think there was a distinction. We all said fifteen to twenty percent. I think uh, James and Logan said fifteen percent. So Jason and I said twenty percent. It's about the same thing. I said thirty. All right. I, I wasn't going the thirty range. I said thirty. Uh, twenty twenty percent. We'll go yeah, with that. You win, Jason. I'll I'll shotgun a natty daddy. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. Florida State Seminoles live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Please uh, tell your neighbors, your folks out there on social media, let them know that we're here. Uh, My thanks to Jason Parker from Chop Chat, Logan Robinson from Noel Game Day, and providing their expert analysis that only needs corrected occasionally right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Don't, Don't talk about the Big Ten unless you want to talk to Mark Rogers first. Happy Thanksgiving.